and um, but I always have to show off my berries from last year. <laughs> I think uh, our soils depleted. Last year's berries were unbelievable. Uh, but tonight, I'm just going to zoom in on weeds. And so I'll, I'll give you all a, uh, a short list of common edible yard weeds, and then talk a little bit about some of the health benefits of each and uh, maybe how soil affects plant nutrition like I added last time, but we do have, it's supposed to be a 10 minute presentation. So I'll, I'll um, add to it if I can. Hey, Mary Carolyn. Yes. Before you get too started, can you go into presentation mode? So if you go up to slideshow, yep. And it's from current slide or from beginning and just scroll through. Perfect, thank you. Yes, okay, thanks for telling me. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about all these transitions in here. So these are, I all say so-called weeds because um, until I first saw dandelions at Whole Foods or some of the other flowers at the grocery store to put it in salads, I didn't really feel like I knew enough about dandelions in particular, although my mother grew up eating those, that's all they had. And um, they had uh, potatoes and uh, they often had fried dandelions. So, wow. um, and it's a very common and well-documented plant mm -hmm. for nutrition. So, you know, I do not know how the dandelion, which is such a beautiful plant in particular, became so maligned and you know we are exposed to so many environmental toxins that we cannot control can't control it um, first of all you walk outside you cannot control what you're breathing from exhaust and what other people are using uh, what's already in the air what's in the water that can't be taken out or isn't even tested um, and just numerous, numerous pesticides. So we're in, we're already exposed. So why not try to control what we can control our own yard? And so I don't use a thing on my yard. We have plenty of wonderful fruits and vegetables and some of them don't go perfectly every year, but uh, mostly they do. And all we do is compost. And we have a compost bowl in the kitchen counter. It really gets filled up every day with banana peels and mango and everything. Put it out with the yard clippings. And uh, there are all kinds of little critters in there working on that pile. And many of you already compost, so you know all about that. We also have a groundhog who lives in our wood pile. He's kind of cute. Um, but it seems that there are a lot of, uh, you know, the yard landscape companies come around pre-emergent and talk about, you know, killing weeds before they start. And that's really dangerous to the people applying it and, um, and just not good for pets and, and not good for yourself. So um, not, many of the weeds are not only uh, beautiful, but they're they're just very precious in their nutrition and also deer love clover and certain types of clover are also edible for humans, but they're a dessert for deer. So, you know, why not let them have that and maybe stay away from your other plants? So it seems that we're conditioned only to find items in the grocery store and it can be hard to try out what I'm suggesting because you really have to identify it. So I'm gonna talk about these four, dandelion, chickweed, plantain, and purslane. And I cannot say enough. Um, it takes me a long time to identify. There are lots of copycats. Even the dandelion has plenty of copycats. If I don't see the yellow flower coming out, um, I'm, you know, I'm very careful. There are probably three plants that look like it and they grow right around it. 
so the dandelion what i say about dandelions i can say about pretty much all of these plants they contain a high amount of vitamin c and fiber dandelions also contain uh, vitamins a b c d and k and minerals like iron zinc, iron zinc and calcium magnesium and potassium they contain flavonoids and um, People make dandelion wine, dandelion syrup, and dandelion tea. And I frequently drink um, this traditional medicinals dandelion root tea. It's also a nice, strong, kind of a coffee-like substitute. So you can definitely use their leaves in salad. And uh, in the spring, they're really just delicious. And I might also mention, I uh, completed my herbal certificate this year and oh, I'm, I'm half of a paper away from finishing my nutrition master's. I'll be glad when that's done. Okay, purslane. this is a purslane from my own, these pictures are from my own yard, that dandelion, and this purslane grows in the driveway. So I had such beautiful ones um, in August. They come out really in August. It's a succulent plant. And um, they just like being in driveways. So um, you can find them there. Again, identify it. Don't just start eating stuff out of your yard. You would have to have no pesticides anywhere in the yard before you even try that. So even with dandelions, I pick them up and I replant them in the garden so that they don't get stepped on or anything, lawnmowers. Um, Purslane is, is close to the ground. It can be easy to miss. It is one of the weeds that has omega-3 fatty acids and also antioxidants like the other ones. Um, and it's um, kind of a, a peppery flavor. So it's also a great kind of a salad addition. Uh, the other one, which can also be used for wound healing or traditionally in traditional medicine was used for wound healing, is um, common plantain. So you had a cut and you were out camping and you could actually wrap a plantain leaf and, and apply it to the skin as you can with many of these um, same edible plants because they have they all have flavonoids and good chemical compounds that are healing in nature. Um, so common plantain, this is out of my garden that I replanted. It's uh, waning at this time of year. It's beautiful early in the spring, like the dandelions has vitamin C and um, lots of other vitamins and minerals. It's easily digestible. It contains fiber as well, more than some of the other plants I've described. The other one is chickweed. And boy, did I have a hard time identifying this one. Um, I grew up pulling chickweed out of the yard. My mom would say, pull the chickweed. And so chickweed has many, many copycats. It's a wonderful plant. Um, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Uh, I have to count them again, um, make sure this picture's accurate, but you, um, you really have to identify chickweed well because it has many copycats and, um, it's smoother. So one of the copycats has more like peach fuzz on it. And so the, the one that's edible is smooth. Um, again, this isn't a field guide. I, I really study and eat slowly any plants, and I've been working on this for a long time with my herbal certificate um, and taking courses in um, just scavenge, you know, just finding things in the yard. And um, so 
I just would say you have to really be careful, but replanting things and then trying them little by little once you have clearly identified it is a, a great way to start. I don't serve anything, of course, unless I've tried it over and over. So um, the chickweed leaves, stems, and flowers can all be used. Um, it's a little bit bitter, has kind of a spinach-like flavor, and it can also be made into tea like dandelion. The, uh, the other two cannot. And uh, I also like to show off my garden produce, strawberries, the dandelions. That was a picture from early spring. Another strawberry, the blueberries, and violets, which I add to the salad. And as I mentioned in the last presentation, the violet also has a copycat that grows right next to it that's poisonous. So this guy here um, comes in white, blue, or purple, and, um, and those petals are edible, um, but the copycat is very evil looking. It's like the difference between a common gardener um, garden snake or a black snake versus a copperhead. So the design on the copycat to the violet is um, is very intricate and um, so this one is um, just plain and that's the one you can eat. Um, with blueberries they do seem to get finicky. Uh, they really want to be pruned and uh, so do the raspberries prune back every year. And um, they, they seem to need a lot of good composted soil. And I, I think that they wane after a couple years if, if you don't kind of trade out the soil. Um, this was a list uh, of some of the native trees and shrubs native to Virginia, our zone seven. And, um, you know, there are just many things that we have available to us to plant and also attracts nice wildlife. Does anyone have a uh, pawpaw? They talked a, a lot about that in um, in our master garden class. I do. Uh, do you? Yeah, but I've never had. Um, I've never been able to to get um, fruit off it. The squirrels get it every year. I've had it from for at least ten years. I think them. I have two of them, of course. Isn't that something? I it's the same with the figs. Um, I have a fig tree that doesn't produce, but my mom had one that produced more than we could eat. So, um, and our raspberries used to be taken every year by the birds. And somehow the year that I pruned them way back was the year we, we had so many that there was plenty to share. We also have enough strawberries, but then they can also get um, a disease. You know, they can get that mold, type of disease. So the other problem with using pesticides, in, in my opinion, is that when so many of them are used, they have to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It's like um, the difference between hand sanitizer and washing your hands. You know, if we're just washing our hands, that's good. But if, if the hand sanitizers get stronger and stronger and stronger, just like antibiotics, then, you know, it has to, the, the new strains develop. So um, I think that um, if you can get away with not using pesticides and just sometimes I hose the plants down if they get various, um, those that webbing or, um, you know, some of the other things that can just be really washed away with water. And, and I always say no to 
to landscapers who come around and, and want to treat stuff. And they'll say, well, you know, I know you don't uh, really like pesticides, but, and I say, no, I'm, we absolutely can't use them. Um, Cause you know, I smell them right away and, and it makes me sick. Um, another one that's wonderful is elderberry. And uh, that's a fantastic plant. And it also has a very toxic copycat. Um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful plant. Uh, just like um, mulberries, just delightful. So those are some of the natives that we find plenty of around here. Does anyone have a mulberry or an elderberry? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get one of those. I have a mulberry that's uh, a bird planted in the middle of my, um, right next to my steps and in the middle of my um, peonies. And mm. so uh, it's, it's too close to the house and I keep, it, and it's impossible to get rid of once you, it's taken root. So you could have mine, but I don't <laughs> get it out. It, it can't be, it, just, the roots just take it, over. It's taken over everything, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you have, have to have a lot of space um, for that one. Definitely, it's hard to have something right next to the house, um, especially if his stuff gets dragged in. Um, the Virginia native strawberry is another um, beautiful strawberry. It uh, does need, seems to need a little bit of a sandy type soil for some reason. And um, also the persimmon, I don't have one of those, but I know that um, a, a lot of people do have them. Uh, service berry is very common. Does anyone have a service berry? I've been planning to get one of those. So all of these will attract beautiful birds and animals to the yard and then um, you know, you can also enjoy them. So, um, what, let's see, what time is it? So that, that is pretty much all the time for this particular presentation. Um, and just the final slide I'll put up is that if you have uh, an edible garden for yourself. I know when the pandemic started, the first thing I thought of was how much I actually had in my own garden because I was afraid to go to the store. Um, you know what's on your plants if you plant them. Um, they have peak nutrition because a lot of the nutrition is taken away when plants are transported and a lot of things are placed on them waxes, sprays, things to keep them from rotting too quickly, uh, preservatives, all this in transport, and then they're, you know, stored in places that um, may not be good for them. So if you can pick something right off the vine, like your tomatoes, then they are much more nutritious. And that's why, um, and this is maybe for another presentation, but the difference between organic versus local, there are just um, a lot of benefits to each. And sometimes you want to have, you know, just try to make good choices. If you can find a local farm that doesn't use pesticides, then try to go with that and try to seek that out because then your, your produce isn't being transported. And of course, Plants are very hydrating, so the more plants you eat, they're great for your skin. They boost the immune system for sure because of the vitamin C and um, antioxidants and the flavonoids. So that, those are the benefits of an edible garden and common weeds. And that is it. <laughs>